move on and tell you really, really briefly about our daughter companies uh, and what they're up to, uh, primarily about their sort of lead asset. And I'm starting, I'm just doing this in an order, and the order is that it's the one furthest along in, in the clinic. So the first two are in the clinic and the next three are well on their way. So very briefly, um, endogena. Retinitis pigmentosa uh, is a devastating uh, familial multifactorial uh, uh, genetic disease uh, and results in the loss of um, cells in the back of your eye that prevent you from seeing uh, light and color. It's a loss of everything, okay? It's a terrible disease. Um, 1.5 million people uh, around the world are, are, are getting this or have this. And Endogena has developed, uh, using the AI tools to develop chemical libraries, has developed some compounds that stimulate the, the new growth of the retinal progenitor stem cells uh, in the eye uh, to repopulate the outer nuclear layer and inner nuclear layer of the eye. And these cells are able to regenerate into the correct rod and cone cells in the eye, uh, which, is, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, Endogena is now in a, a phase one stroke 2A a rising dose tox study with um, a bunch of functional endpoints as well as readouts. Uh, so they went in, the, in uh, three months ago now, they went into the clinic. And so that's going to be a readout next year in, in a disease where there really isn't a general or a generic way of treating that disease. All the successful therapies in this space are gene therapies that target a few percent of the whole RP population. Uh, and we hope to be uh, gene agnostic or mutation gene agnostic in that sense. So Anne Bellin is the CEO of Rejuvenate Biomed and when I met Anne the first time as we were looking for early stage companies but we, we, we saw this and we went to talk to Anne and, and she showed us the data on the right hand side here and this is really impressive. Uh, I know this because I was at Novartis and we had a sarcopenia program that, that was ended up not so impressive unfortunately. Uh, and the bottom line is that Anne has an approach with her team um, in Belgium where they simply look for combinations of known, approved, safe drugs and look for unanticipated effects in um, a worm screening platform uh, and then move these things on into the relevant mouse models. And in this particular case, the first asset that's in a phase 1B for acute sarcopenia uh, is a combination of, of, of two drugs uh, that on their own do very little in a uh, mitochondrial mutant mouse model of sarcopenia uh, at doses that would be equivalent to not even the highest dose that you would be given to humans for those two drugs for their indications respectively. But when you combine them, uh, they have remarkable effects on, on running, time of running, speed of running, everything else. And more importantly, they also um, improve muscle force per unit area. So number three, this is now not yet clinical, senescence therapeutics. I'm not sure any, any portfolio biotech company should not have a senescence uh, uh, target or asset in their portfolio. Manuel Serrano is the co-founder of senescence therapeutics um, along with um, Tim Cash who runs, runs this program in Barcelona uh, and Tim worked with Manuel's lab. You know that Manuel Serrano discovered that when you treat certain solid tumors with uh, chemotherapies, you induce uh, the, uh, the, the, some of the tumor cells evade the drug by becoming senescent and no longer being in the cell cycle. Uh, and they contribute to all kinds of complications in these tumors and have been associated with metastasis. So we have a monoclonal antibody against a cell surface target that is expressed upon chemotherapy treatment in a relevant tumor. That's just some data here from a publication. Uh, related targets are not massively up, uh, overexpressed upon chemotherapy uh, induction. And our antibody binds this receptor and makes these cells now susceptible to immune clearance by the normal immune system in the body. So that's a, uh, and that's, that's gone into CMC. We're about 18 to 21 months away from the clinic. Let's see if we can, we can keep that going. So it's a very exciting project from Manuel's lab. In the background there, we have multiple more targets for the same kind of mechanism that we're working on to validate. And we also have a platform for senescent cells in CKD running. Uh, number four, yes, number four, telomere therapeutics. 
Um, you've just heard a wonderful talk by Fabrizio about uh, restoring telomeres or preventing DNA damage, by DNA damage along telomeres. Uh, we have a slightly different mechanism of action here that we've discovered, or sorry, I should say, our co-founder has discovered. And basically, um, our co-founders discovered that when you delete a particular target in, in uh, patient-derived iPSCs from telomeropathy diseases, uh, he can restore telomere length to their more or less normal size uh, without making them get any longer either. Uh, and so we know about this target and we know that there are compounds out there that, that hit this target at least. Uh, they may hit other things as well. And so we're simply optimizing our compounds for this target uh, for clinical trials in, in a rare disease indication to do with telomeropathies. The idea here, of course, is to expand into diseases that, that you've just seen on Fabrizio's, Fabrizio's slide very well that are associated with telomere damage in some way. Fifth, last, but most definitely not the least. Some people might call this slightly more moonshot style. It comes with a bit more risk, but I actually really, really like this project. It could be the most exciting of all. It's gonna take a longer road. As we all age, our blood-brain barrier decays. And so uh, we are, uh, we, uh, that, that, that BBB decay causes a loss of proteostasis on, on either side. So things, proteins, metabolites get to where they shouldn't be on either side. And things that should get to where they should don't necessarily get to the right place either. One of the consequences of this altered proteostasis either side of the blood-brain barrier is neuroinflammation. And neuroinflammation is bad because it causes cognitive decline dementia, and the thousand other diseases that are all lumped together here in this space. Uh, and so there's a whole set of diseases called the cerebral small vessel diseases, which are all somehow attributable to basically a damaged blood-brain barrier. So we took Parabryo's mouse data from Lee Rubin's lab, who is the co-founder of Vascular Therapeutics, and we looked for all the genes that went from young, old parabryoses up, down, up, or down, up, down, depending how you want to look at it, and we simply made a very small chemical library against all the gene products of the things that changed and related pathways that changed and screened a blood-brain barrier model in vitro. So we have got a very high hit rate and some of our hits are already sub-micromolar in our cellular assay. And so we're now in uh, uh, validation of those hits and we're investigating uh, relatively complicated but really quite useful animal models to prove our proof of concept for this particular story. This will be a tougher route.